If you want to repurpose an old Canon DSLR camera to use as a webcam to level up your zoom game, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alex. So yeah, today we're talking about how you can basically take an old DSLR camera that you may have lying around gathering dust and give it a new lease of life as a webcam for your for your computer to either, as I say, improve the image quality on your Zoom or Teams meetings, uh, but then maybe also just actually to do some filming from your computer, much like I'm doing now. So the camera that I'm filming on right at the moment is basically the same one that I use for my Zoom calls, and it's a Canon EOS 60D, which is uh, getting on for 10 years old now. And I can just quickly show you uh, how I've got this set up. So here it is on top of my uh, computer monitor and that's just the kit lens as well. So hardly a piece of uh, a <laughs> high quality piece of lens, but nevertheless, it seems to be doing an okay job. And I've got a couple of cables that are coming in there. So there's one out at the bottom of this side you can see, which is actually the battery cable. And then over on the other side, we've got two cables coming out. Uh, one of those is coming out from the USB and one is coming out from the shutter. And yes, by the way, uh, that white cable is making me a little bit crazy. I've got to replace that with a black one at some point very soon. <laughs> That's my OCD nature. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, what do we need to do to actually get this done? Well, there are a couple of ways that you can get a feed in from your camera. Uh, the probably the easiest way if I just come across to uh, this page here I can show you that the easiest way is to get something like this the Elgato Camlink 4k and what this basically does is it allows you to take an HDMI source from any any source and then pass it through and it will plug into the USB socket on your computer and your your, your computer will then recognize this as being a webcam so that means that you can take the HDMI out from your camera, plug it into this little device, and then when you plug it into the uh, uh, your computer, then in your Zoom or Teams or whatever, it will just show up as a camera in there. Uh, it's about $100. It is the easiest sort of plug and play uh, way to get things done. However, there is a, a free way too. So that is from by using Canon's own piece of software, which they released uh, last year called the EOS Webcam Utility. Now this basically does the same thing. Rather than coming out from your HDMI uh, out from your camera though, it actually comes out from the USB. And so you bring it over USB into your USB of your computer. And then once again, it is recognized as a camera. And it's pretty simple to install really. It's got all the details on this website. I shall leave a link obviously to the Elgato product and also to this website in the uh, description below but you simply download it for either windows or for mac and then once you've downloaded it there's not really anything to set up as soon as you plug in a, a canon camera over usb it will recognize it and it will show up as a device in your or as a camera rather in your teams or whatever so i can just show you how this looks in my um settings for here we go this is settings for zoom now I've actually got this set to my Ecamm Live virtual camera because when I'm on Zoom, I tend to use my Ecamm Live virtual camera. But equally, you can see all the other cameras that I've got here. And one of them is this EOS webcam utility. So that is how you would set it up in there. Incidentally, I will be doing a whole video about how to use Ecamm Live specifically with uh, Zoom and for meetings to do improve your presentations and uh, quality of your meetings as well. But I'll link to that in the top corner when I've uh, completed that video. Incidentally, while we're talking about Canon applications, another good application to download, which you may or may not already have done if you own a Canon camera, is the uh, Canon EOS utility. So the last one was EOS webcam utility, and the next one is just simply Canon EOS utility. And that one basically allows you to control the settings and things like that for your uh, camera from your computer. And that's obviously quite advantageous when we're actually sitting in front of the camera and we want to adjust the settings on the go. So depending on the model you have, a uh, model of camera, uh, will depend on the exact version of the uh, software that it asks you to download. But in fact, if I just go and show you the download page, here basically you just select the model of camera you have. So you can see that it does cover uh, quite a range of uh, cameras, of Canon DSLR cameras, and you download the software 
And so here for me, this is the version of the software that I have, and you can adjust the settings. I've actually made the resolution quite big on this screen so that you can see it. However, <laughs> it's actually cut the bottom off a little bit. But anyway, the only two buttons on the bottom are just some extra preferences. But here you can see you can just click in here and change things like the uh, frame rate, the f-stops and all the other settings that you have in your camera. And you can also click this button here if you want to take a picture, for example. So you can actually do that all from the desktop as well. And so yeah, it's uh, useful, obviously being on the other side of the camera, it allows you to make adjustments on the fly without having to sort of get up and go to the other side of the camera to see the screen to adjust them. In terms of the uh, focusing, one of the uh, issues that I had was that my uh, camera is, as I say, it's a 10 year old camera and it was before the time when they had sort of autofocus on the fly during the live uh, feed out. So for example, now if I move my hand towards the camera, there is no autofocus happening. You have to actually activate the autofocus. So normally you would do that on this old camera by holding down the, uh, the shutter button just slightly and it will uh, focus. And so that's what I needed to do. Well, fortunately you can get a remote shutter button, which I shall show you here. Uh, beg your pardon, this one here. So this is a remote shutter. It just plugs into the socket on the side of the camera. That was one of those other leads that you saw coming out of it. It would help if I actually shared my screen here so you could see what I was talking about, wouldn't it? <laughs> there you go. So, uh, so yeah, it's a remote camera shutter button and it plugs in with this little socket onto the side of your camera. And then it's got a button that allows you to take a picture. Now, often people use these, the cable's not too long and people would have these when they've got the camera on a tripod and then you would operate it with this button. And it's basically to help stop any shake or a juttering uh, with the uh, the picture if you're trying to operate the camera whilst it's on the tripod. Uh, however, it does serve a purpose here because it means that the cable can trail across to me and so I can just sit and adjust the uh, focus or, or rather activate the autofocus by just holding down that button slightly. And it's uh, only about $15, I think. Yeah, $16.98. And one thing to note is if you have got a Canon camera is just double check that the uh, connector that you've got is the right one because you can see that Canon uh, cameras have a range of different potential uh, shutter buttons. Another option would be to use a wireless one if your camera was slightly further away from you so you could actually re operate it uh, remotely. Personally, getting into issues of requiring batteries and things like that, the uh, wired version is fine for what I do because I'm not actually that far away from it and the cable basically reaches to me. So uh, yeah, the, uh, the this one is a better option for me. And in fact, there are no batteries or anything with it. It just plugs in uh, to the little socket on the side of the camera. Now, speaking of batteries, obviously another issue that you may think you have with your uh, DSLR camera is the fact that you use batteries with it. Well, there is a way around that, a uh, very common way. It's not like a trick or anything. And that is to get a uh, dummy power pack. So uh, these basically are the same shape as the battery of the camera. And then it pops into the little battery socket. But as you can see, it's got a cable that goes to a little small power brick and then plugs into the wall outlet. So that means that you've got uh, power going continuously to the camera and so you don't have any issues also with it shutting off. So there you go for just about 30 or 40 dollars you can get a couple of little accessories and download that free software and you could be using your uh, camera as a webcam which as I say I really do think makes a big difference when you're on calls. I'll leave links to all of the products and websites that I've mentioned in the description. If you found this video interesting or useful, then don't forget to hit that like button down below and also leave any comments or questions or feedback that you've got as well. I'll be happy to answer those. Also, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and that way you'll get notified whenever I make any new content. Well, that's all for this video, but don't go anywhere because there's some more great content coming up right now.